We're here on the docks. There's lots of shark fishermen that head out here into the bay in Florida. And the big question is, if you catch a shark and you release it, how many of those sharks actually live? We need to figure out the science. That's why we're here with Dr. Nick Whitney. It's gonna be awesome. Go boys. I tell people I what I do and, and they're like, oh, you have to, the most exciting job ever. Yeah, I have the greatest job and spend probably about 90% of my time writing grants and sitting at my desk and typing and working up data, which is also really exciting. But. Of course it is exciting when you catch the sharks. We're out catching sharks today. We just hooked up. I think it's either a big black nose or a small black tip. Most of the guys who are doing catch and release fishing are doing it for the benefit of the animal. You know, they want the, they want the animal to survive, grow up, and be caught again. All right, let's set the stage. Shark scientists here, like Nick, are working with shark fishermen so that everyone is happy. You see, we all want to have sharks in the sea. In the past, shark research has helped us understand that sharks are not like other fish. They reproduce slower, with fewer numbers, and at an older age. In fact, in order to protect sharks, you need to limit their catch and do things like catch and release. But here's the catch. It's easy to count how many you catch if you bring them onto the dock. It's hard to figure out how many survive a catch and release event. The assumption that the shark just swims away and lives a long, happy life after that isn't necessarily true. What that means is we're trying to figure out, of sharks that are caught and released by fishermen, how many of them actually survive. To do that, we're using these acceleration data loggers. They're accelerometer tags that record every tail beat the shark makes. These data loggers combine the depth, the pitch, and tail beats so that Nick and his team can tell when the sharks are swimming down, swimming up, if they live, or if they die. A technique that's never been used to study the sharks off this coast. So here's the process. They first catch the sharks, and then on them put an accelerometer and float package. So when we roll them over like this, they go into a sleep-like state called tonic immobility. Ideally, they just totally zonk out and hold still throughout the tagging process when they're like this. It doesn't always work. This thing starts corroding in seawater as soon as it gets wet, and eventually it allows the whole strap to come off, and the tag releases from the shark's fin and floats up to the surface, and once it hits the surface, this radio transmitter starts sending out a signal that we can hear from up to about 10 miles away. It's even more fun when, when we put these tags out and then we have to go out and look for them and get them back. After 24 to 48 hours, the team now has to recover a whole bunch of floating tags, each one sending out a small ping. My antenna can hear a pinging signal from these tags. It pings about once every second. And as I scan back and forth, I can find the spot where the signal is the strongest or the loudest. We're gonna be burning daylight, so we gotta try and get them quickly. This unique combination of pinging tags and boats to collect the information proved to be extremely effective. In the end, Nick's team had a 100% success rate finding the tags. The biggest result of this study may be simply that using data loggers like this is extremely effective at looking at fishing techniques to determine whether or not a shark survives a particular fishing method. For instance, not only were they able to determine how long it takes these black tips to recover and start swimming normally after release, which was about 11 hours, they were also able to determine that about 91% of them survived the catch and release event. In the grand scheme, that's pretty good. But more importantly, we know this important statistic, something that will allow us to properly manage these important and valuable fish of the sea. In the end, I'm just happy that Nick and his team are out there pioneering this field, studying as many different sharks as possible, and making sure that we're valuable stewards of the ocean. So thanks for watching. There's all kinds of great research that Dr. Nick Whitney's doing. If you want to connect with him, um, I have links down below. And stay tuned because there are more in this series, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Film crews are universally a pain in the neck. And... No, no. Uh, I'm talking about our film. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> Let's go, boys.